Good morning everyone, uh, this is Hyowa here. Today I'll be reacting to the story teaser called Flavors of the World for Genshin Impact. Um, I'll be reacting to this in English, Japanese and Chinese. Um, so let's get started. Macho Sis, God of the Stove, born from a spark when stone struck stone. He Go was a God, God with a great love for humanity and their well being. Millennia ago, the people sought to expand their city. They built a dwelling on the plains and called it the Gwaili Assembly. The stove god cared greatly for the people, turning himself into minions who went into every mm. home, fostering Music. food and solidarity alike. Alas, their home was taken by a flood. The waters ravaged the Gwaili Assembly and forced the people back south to Liyue Harbor. The, the music is just so good again, it's just... Ah. Though the distance was not far, the journey was plagued by a terrible storm. For a dozen days, the Adepti stayed by... So that would be Ganyu's mother. So that's supposed to be Chilin. ...by their side. During this time, the stove god cooked an ancient delicacy, flatbread with a meat sauce to stave off the cold and damp. Fit for those on the move. So basically, he's the creator of the... What was it called again? This the more of meat pancake thing in the game. Was it different? Centuries later, disaster and plague arose. Zhongli with the two rock hands. Once more, the stove god would appear no longer, for he placed all of his power into the land itself to quell the calamities. His power expended, and his wits greatly reduced. Thus, his body decreased in size. By the time he parted ways with us, he wasn't even the height of a human. He told Rex Lapis and I of the dishes that bring joy and of the secrets of the flame. Then went into the mountains and entered into a long slumber. This is where we start to see the animation quality for the... The in-game cutscenes uh, increase. I mean, just this animation style here is very reminiscent of um, a very old style of cartoon. The stove god departed, and Guoba was born. When he awoke, he ate the chili men's cornbread buns placed on the offering table by a young lady in yellow. Though he did not remember the past, he was profoundly moved and decided to follow this young lady thereafter. <laughs> Chibi Shangling is just so cute. And she's even got um, a little boo boo, as uh, I think the Americans call it. The stove god had quietly disappeared, but the vendors rose early to hawk their wares. People went out to buy goods, lit their stoves and cooked food, just as they had done every day for as long as they could remember. In Liyue, things have always been this way. Ashtaha, the Adeptai, Nature provides. The mountains rejoice. Shall. We are blessed by heavens. Hmm. I wonder if. Hmm. I'm assuming that's cloud retainer, right? Hmm, or is that a different one? Because one of them makes gadgets and one of them cooks, or is it the same person? Good grace. Years have. I assumed the dragon form was a adepti. Gone by. 
The world has transformed, but our way of life survives. Chichu who never grows as these guys become older. I'll be interested to see if Mihoyo does a travel back in time event. I mean, since we've done the uh, Chasm events and we know that time travel is technically possible, especially after the uh, Raiden story quest where we technically go through time. I wonder if it's possible for them to create an event where we can go back to the UA during the earlier periods when the, um, some of the characters are much younger. I mean, she be Xingyang, she be Xiangling, Xingqiu, Chongyong, and uh, Hu Tao. I mean, I can only imagine how fun Hu Tao is as a kid. <laughs> Fame and fortune is only a season. It is the moment that we should embrace. Then our reveal character for the next patch will be being Yunjin. And then Kerchin, Paimon, Traveler, Shenzhen. present. Heritage becomes legacy. Long into the future may we thrive. So if I remember correctly, this was for the Moon Chase Festival, which was basically a celebration for the Mid Autumn Festival in China. So it's great to see that they are adding more events that correspond to the Chinese holidays. I mean, with the um, Moon Chase being Mid Autumn, and then we had the Lantern Rite for Chinese New Year, and then we have. Um, well, we had the Wind Bloom Festival for around Easter, but we didn't have it this year, did we? Or did we? I can't remember now. But we have seen a few events, so I'm expecting them to continue bringing us more events and more cutscenes like this in the future. Okay, let's move on to the Japanese version. So the person narrating these um, cutscenes is Madam Ping. So I didn't play the English uh, dub, so I'm assuming that's Madam Ping for the English dub, and I'm assuming this is the Japanese um, voice actor for Madam Ping. Amadonga I like this. This kind of like um aged crumbling mural or yeah mural that's that, that's technically what it is it's basically just painted on the wall and the plaster is basically aged and dried out and started to crack and i just kind of see this aging effect where the paints flaked off showing how long the um, time has passed and how this god has been kind of forgotten <laughs> I love how they've actually kind of referenced ancient um, paintings, ancient cave paintings for this. And then they kind of added the style of these um, kind of Chinese symbols and characters to um, symbolize the people, the trees, and even the mountains, for example, are kind of like the old forms and even the house way, uh, the, the way that the house is drawn. Kamadogamiは I like this how they descend from heaven kind of uh, art style here with the uh, classical style of the clouds of that, um, I believe it's the Tang era that used this sort of painting style. I mean, if the chicken was this big, Ganyu's mom must have been very large. I mean, we, we know from some of the lore that Ganyu herself was quite a chubby child so 
Maybe that's linked to the size of her mum. Yeah, so this is the Mora meat bun. You, you've got to admit that this style of artwork is just amazing in its own right. The way that they weave in the art style of mythology in China into Genshin Impact to kind of make it relevant and to make it um, relatable is something that just takes a lot of effort and even the colors that are used as well is very similar to those time periods you can see that the the buddhist influences that are around that time as well in the script and designs I love how they just keep everything consistent with the background art, like the smoke, for example, who's drawn in that style of artwork. Rather than trying to change the animation style, they've just kept it consistent while keeping Goba in a certain style as well. I love how the movie music transition from Goba kind of a dead time period into him retiring and then into Liyue's golden age of the harbour and the flourishing after the war. Now, I they just keep it consistent as well. Like here, for example, we've got the false script that, that was created similar for Inazuma, where it's not Japanese script, it's just another made up script for that world. I think this was probably the event that we start to see them adding a lot more efforts to the cutscenes. I mean, these aren't the in-game cutscenes, these are actual cutscenes that they had to create without using the 3D models and stuff that they've already got. And here we see um, these, these cutscenes expanding from the usual one to two minutes to three and a half minutes, which is great for us, the audience who is watching it. Okay, let's go on to the Chinese version now. Yeah, this is Madame Ping for the Chinese uh, voices. So originally I believe it was meant to be a panda. I believe there were some um, screenshots of in the early gameplay in the beta uh, before we got the current release was that he was originally meant to be a panda and not uh, a bear as he is now or uh, a hybrid bear panda. Yeah, 
，到平原上建立聚落，取名归离集。灶神惜护民生，画出分身，潜入千家万户，帮着生火做饭，助人团圆。然而。一场洪灾夺去了家园，大水毁灭了归离集，居民被迫南下，迁回离月港。路途虽不很远，途中却有狂风骤雨，仙人护送民众走了十多天。期间 ，I love how the music basically explains the suffering of the common folk. Then the descendation of the adepti and the gods to help them during this time. That the music is very solemn. It's very. It's not like it's painful, but it's very solemn. It's like it's oh, we can tell that they're suffering. Here's a few pictures. Here's the cut scene showing the people struggle and then them trying to rebuild. And in here, is when transition from that to a more happy tone. Yeah, 灶神制作出一种古老的美食，由馕与能驱湿驱寒的肉酱组成。We like see the fields of wheat or rice. Him helping, hit them with food, them smiling. It's like a more upbeat tone. 后来数百年，大地上有灾难与疾病，灶神不再频繁出现，而是将全部力量汇入土地。And again, the music transitions to his sacrifice of his powers to help the common folk, becoming a little bit more grand. 灾害，耗尽力量的灶神知性大减，身形也变得很小，最终与我们告别时，已不足一人高。他将带来幸福的菜式与炉火的奥妙，告知帝君与我。自己去往山林，久久的睡去。I mean, in his statue, these were like,、um, like braces and like boots. 灶神辞行此事，锅巴便诞生了。醒来那日，他吃到黄衣女孩做的腊肉窝窝头，虽记不得往事，仍被打动了。决意要跟着这个女孩。灶神悄然消失后，每天清晨，商贩早早的开始摆摊吆喝，人们外出采买，生火做饭，与过去每一日并无区别，因为离月啊，从来都是如此。I just realized that there is actually an adepti in the moon. <laughs> This is a lantern rite festival. I wonder if that was an adepti though. Is that meant to be sky bracer? Sky斗转，沧海桑田，烟火人间依旧。功名在我，百岁千秋，无望秉烛夜游。金谷诸事，激荡中流，宏图待看新秀。Oh yes, so again, all the cutscenes are good, and here is I think where we start to see more efforts、um, being applied against the dubs.、Um, the dubs are very consistent with one another; they all fit within the time frame of the cutscene itself.、Um, The way that this ends is basically、um, Ganyu, Ningguan, and Kerching are reciting almost like a poem. You know,、uh, they've got that style of、um, syllables to it.、Um, I'll need to check the Japanese one to see if they did something similar, like a haiku. 
Let's go back. I know there's still the Chinese version. Let's go back. せよと、kind of they kind of kept it to kind of a similar feel yeah i don't think it's a haiku for ganyu and ningguan though it kind of feels like it for kirchin so it feels like they're trying to keep that kind of poetic tone to the end as well which is very nice gone by the world has transformed but our way of life survives Fame and fortune is only a season. It is the moment that we should embrace. Past meets present. Heritage becomes legacy. Long into the future may we thrive. Yeah, so very consistent throughout. I mean, everyone is keeping to that poetic tone. I mean, for the English, I'm assuming it's very hard for them to rewrite it in the same structure because it's so short, the stanzas. So they're going to have to completely try to find someone who can actually compress whatever meanings there are in the Chinese version. And then the Japanese are doing the same thing as well. Again, it's very interesting to see this kind of cross-culture translation and the effort that's been put in. The music, I really enjoy it, um, the especially this to beginning part. City. They built a dwelling on the plains and called it the Gwaili Assembly. The stove god cared greatly for the people, turning himself into minions who went into every home, fostering food and solidarity. There's something about uh, a wind instrument that just starts off like that, that really draws you into the music. Alike. Alas, their home was taken by a flood. The waters ravaged the Gwaili assembly and forced the people back south to Liyue Harbor. Though the distance was not far, the journey was plagued by a terrible storm. For a dozen days, the Adepti stayed by their side. During this time, the stove god cooked an ancient delicacy, flatbread with a meat sauce to stave off the cold and damp. Fit for those on the move. Hmm. I was wondering about the sun, the way that it's drawn. I wonder if there's a significance in that. Centuries later, disaster. I mean, maybe because it's a teaser, so Miho always tries to hide the face of Zhongli so no one knows who he is. Because maybe the people who haven't yet played the game don't know who he is, so they don't want to show it in this uh, form. So they don't <laughs> purposely show the great reveal of who the Archon is, or maybe it's just the art style. Um, I do remember a lot of people were commenting about the, these large hands about whether or not this is supposed to be one of his um, attack forms or something. I mean, we did see um, Raiden Shogun who basically gets these large hands when she kind of had her um, ve uh, vessel kind of form these, um, well, going to her second form basically, and they form these giant hands. So who knows? Um, maybe he does. Master and plague arose once more. The stove god would appear no longer, for he placed all of his power into the land itself to quell the calamities. His power expended and his wits greatly reduced. Thus, his I have to admit, though, this is quite a touching story of why Goba is with Shang Ling. Though, it does make me wonder if at some point Mihoyo is going to buffer down the story, as in, like, for me, I'm not too sure where Mihoyo is going with this. We, we do know that the story is getting darker as time goes on. I mean, there are areas where we're now facing, um, well, we're facing old gods for first, 
and foremost, but now we're also fighting Archons, and we've got to fight the Vituis, um Harbingers, uh, and then we now have um, God knows what from the Abyss. So it does make me wonder if Shangling is going to at some point power up, because Corvo is going to regain his powers at some point. That is something I want to see. I mean, I do know Honkai Impact, for example, does have character, um, you know, like different characters designed for the same character. So they have um, Kiana, but then you have Kiana with a different version of Kiana who has different attacks, different weapons, and complete different movesets. It does make me wonder if they at some point are going to add um, duplicate character. Well, basically the same character but a different design a different playstyle or if they're going to update the playstyle giving us a new way of playing with the characters that we currently have did not remember the past he was profoundly moved and decided to follow this young lady thereafter the stove god had quietly disappeared but the vendors rose early to hawk their wares people went out now the one thing that's missing from all of this, I would say. Out to buy goods, lit their stoves and cook. It's technically these these buildings here don't exist, so I'm assuming this is probably where some of the villages and other stuff were before they kind of disappeared. I mean, because as we know from the map, those buildings here and over here and over here don't exist, though there were some ruins in this direction and the the bank is in this direction, the mint. Over here, there was technically a large building underneath the mountain, so technically that shouldn't be there. Food, just as they had done every day for as long as they could remember. In Liyue, things have always been this way. I do like the fact that they then show us all of the Adepti, all of the provides, past characters. The mountains rejoice, but I really want to know who this is cooking heavens. in the background because this is not that. Yeah. So, and, and this is, we know, is Madame Ping because she's got the bell. And according to Shang Ling, her master is technically Madame Ping. And if she uses a spear, then that explains why she uses her spear. You can see Xiao here. I actually don't know if this is supposed to be Rex Lapis. I, I do feel like maybe this was an Adepti and that he actually passed away. But maybe it is maybe supposed to be a disposable form. I mean, we did get to fight a dragon, but here we have a dragon, but we never got to fight him. Instead, we got to fight the other dragon, the Earth Dragon, as people call him. But I want to know who is cooking here. <laughs> Years have gone by. The world has transformed, but our way of life survives. Ah, I do hope at some point we get to get the chibi version. I mean, Xingyang's design looks really interesting as a chibi. I would love to see that in more detail. It's a shame that it's so far away you can't really see the details. Um, but yeah. Anyway, um, I hope you guys all enjoyed this uh, reaction video. Um, I know it's quite long because I keep interrupting the actual cutscenes themselves. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, I can't really stop it. So um, if you enjoyed this video, um, please like and subscribe. And if you have any comments in how I can improve these videos, please leave a comment below. Uh, um, since I only have three subscribers and no comments so far, I'll probably be able to reply to you almost instantaneously. Thank you for watching um, and have a nice day. Bye.